Ah, expletive. Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg, welcome to my machine shop. Well, I finished the last video in the three-part series, how to machine the cylinder block for our Wallaby 30cc engine. And it ended up being a little bit longer than I anticipated. So what I decided to do was to take some of the tangents that I went off on and pull them out of that video and put them into this one. So the topics I'd like to cover today are, yes, I did break a tap, how I affected the repair on the block and was able to re-drill and tap that hole. I want to talk about versioning documents and the, and the model that we use. If, you, if you're not downloading the plans and you're not interested in that, you can skip over that. I've put chapter headings at the bottom of this video so you can just move past that. And finally, I talk about the boring head and setting it up. If you've got one or you're not interested, again, you can skip over that part. Let me know what you think about pulling this, these tangential topics off to the side, or should I leave them in and not worry about the length of the video? Um, you can contact me at greg at gregsmachineshop.com, or you can leave comments below. Um, I appreciate, appreciate the feedback. Oh, and I'd like to give a special shout out to my Patreons, including Jeff. How you doing, Jeff? Good to see you. If you're interested in looking at my Patreon page, it's Greg's Machine Shop at Patreon. So let's get to the few topics that we've talked about. Ah, oh, expletive. There's no way we're going to back this tap out. It's a 440 and just way too small. The only way we're going to get this little tap out of there is to drill an adjacent hole big enough that we can pry the tap out of there. So we need to drill an adjacent hole right next to this tapped hole and pry this tap out of here trying to do as little damage to our workpiece as we can. I started with a small drill. It was actually a scrap drill. Because if you hit that tap with a drill, it's going to destroy it. Taps are made out of very hard material. And then I used progressively larger drill bits, enlarging the hole until I was able to take a drywall screw, which are very hard, and use its sharp point to pry the tap clear. Then I loaded a quarter inch flat end mill into the drill chuck and positioned it such that it covered the damaged area, then carefully milled down about 0.3 inches, which was the depth of the original hole. Then it was over to the lathe where I turned down a round of aluminum to be a snug fit in the hole. I used a high temperature structural adhesive to bond the aluminum round into the hole. JB Weld would be a fine substitute. I'm gonna let this cure for a few days before I reface the top and drill and tap a new hole. This time I'm gonna drill the hole deeper, maybe a half of an inch, even though I only need to run the tap down three eighths of an inch. All right, let's go over and take a look at our prints. Today we're gonna to machine in the features in the top of the block, these holes here. There's four different sets of them. Before we do, I wanna talk a little bit about versioning. There's a version in this lower corner here, in this case, version one, and that's the version of the model itself. There's a second one represented by this date here, and that's the date of this print. In this case, 11-7-2022. Sometimes a change may need to be made to the model itself, and that will affect both this version here, this version will get bumped, and the, when the drawing's updated, this date here will get bumped. If the block is version is, is bumped up to say version 1.01, then everything that uses this on up, their versions will also be updated. There's version documents included in all of the zip files that reflect the current version and the latest versions. So keep an eye on that to make sure that you're using the latest versions of the prints. Let's talk a moment about the boring head. I picked this one up off of Amazon for about 72 bucks. And I'm pretty impressed. Comes with a boring head, of course, and an assortment of tools, the type with the carbide chip cemented on the end, a couple of Allen wrenches. The tools can be put in multiple positions for increasingly larger holes. You can even put one out here for really large holes. It has the micrometer for moving the actual head from the shank. This one's got an R8 shank for my 
bench top mill. There's three set screws on the side. I what I do is I uh, moderately tighten the two outside ones and use those kind of a gib, and then use the center one to actually lock it down. So I'll loosen the center one, advance the micrometer, then tighten the center one. The tool tip. I have oriented in the same direction as the micrometer. Um, I'll, lay a, I'll lay a straight edge on here, line this up, then tighten the tool down. This particular micrometer is an indirect type. Indirect means that you're measuring radius here. Direct, you're measuring the diameter of the hole you're creating. So in my case, if I move this 10 thousandths on the micrometer, this head actually moves ten thousandths and my hole is twenty thousandths bigger. Let me show you the way that I verified whether this was direct or indirect. This setup here is pretty self-explanatory. I mounted a dial indicator with a magnetic base to my mill table and then simply measured how far the bore head moved when I turned the micrometer. There's quite a bit of backlash in this micrometer, but in all the operations I did, I only moved the boring head in one direction, that is making the hole bigger. So the backlash wasn't an issue. And the micrometer read pretty accurately. Of course, I didn't use the micrometer as my absolute guide. I measured as I went along and made small cuts at the very end to arrive at the size hole I wanted. So those are the topics I wanted to touch on in this video. How to recover from a broken tap, how we version our 3D models and our drawings, and the use of a boring head. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more like this, click subscribe. And if you're so moved, click the like button. That really helps me with the YouTube algorithms. So until next time, I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my workshop. Take care.